<laughs> Beginning of another grand sling adventure. All of this is inbound. No, but is that bigger one coming? Mother trucker. So if there's a window, you're going to have to... Uh, okay, the purple stuff is not good. Oh, not, no, it's bad. This is not looking great. The orange is even worse. <laughs> it's a great start. Are you going to save this much space? Man, we had the opportunity to <laughs> waste it. Can't believe it. But I've seen the two of you fly and waste with on movies. No, no, but the problem is we're a team for a group. Yeah. And it can't fly into cloud, cloud is it? Really? It was just too damn nonsense. formation. Sean, um, I think we've lost our opportunity. Such are the vagaries of arranging a flying rendezvous in the rainy season around here. It is day zero of our six week adventure flying this plane 12,000 kilometers from the Netherlands to her home base in South Africa. Today we were supposed to meet two young pilots that over the past five weeks have flown SHW, our high-wing prototype aircraft, down the African continent from Europe. The beautiful end to our first country in Africa. Tomorrow we head to Sudan. The idea was to meet pilot Bambi and her partner Moritz in Botswana and then show them some of our favourite places there and in Namibia. Well, we have to give the keys back, which is just heartbreaking. I don't think we're mentally prepared to let go of SHW. We built two prototypes. SHW stands for Sling High Wing. I think oh, these planes are so huge. And TDR <laughs> stands for Tail Dragger. This is taking me back, man. I feel like I'm going back to Oshkosh. Those were the test Sling High Wing aircraft. And you know, when you design and then you build that airplane, and when you then have the opportunity to fly her from Johannesburg across the Atlantic Ocean, through the Caribbean, to North America, to show her to the world, to fly her to the Arctic Circle, down to Scotland, England, to Greece, then with your family across the Mediterranean, you bond with an aeroplane. You get to trust her, you get to love her, and you get to know her. So I wanted to go and welcome SHW home after her flight across Africa. And so we got together some of the team that went from Johannesburg to Oshkosh with our respective friends and partners. Okay. So we're on my door. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to try and do is I'm trying to do our own spacing. Our own spacing. So, so yeah. going as a flight of three? Going as a flight of three. We'll be listening in on to One, James. two, three, four, five, and you'll do all. Linda Sollers, airline pilot cool. and owner of the first production version of the High Wing, came out from America to join us. All right, so this is the first time I've flown this this heavy. Matt Cohen jumped in with her. We'll just roll it long. In our Sling 2 demo aircraft. In our Sling TSI were Mike Blythe and his wife Sue, who'd only just obtained her pilot license. Sitting in the back with them was Matt's girlfriend, Jessie. Jess, you're in tight. It's your trip. Have you checked right? We'd had some trouble actually with our tail dragger. We'd broken a tail wheel off in stress testing and it had only just been replaced. Turned out there were still a few problems to iron out. Whoops! So I was flying with a friend and filmmaker Lloyd Ross in a slightly untested aircraft to go meet SHW. Head of field traffic, up, 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 Alpha, lining up runway 29. Flaps one. Okay, guys, how are we all looking? Okay. Uh, Linda? We're good. Okay, let's all roll. Head of field traffic, tank it out to Romeo, Sierra Navina Golf, and Papa Papa Alpha, rolling runway 29. I haven't flown this for a long time. Look up because she hasn't flown for months and she's flown since they put a new engine in 40 minutes 40 minutes since they put the new engine in? yeah are you taking me with you? <laughs> bit of field traffic okay we're going to talk on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and uh, monitor 1, 2, 5, 6 yeah, well, it feels a little bit like always chaotic at the start eh? <laughs> yeah it does but um, we're away and flaps up thanks for reminding me I wasn't flaps up <laughs> Okay, dudes, we are behind the two of you. And uh, Linda, we're going to come up on your left wing. Good. Okay, T's and P's are in the green. I mean, there's an order of importance. The most important thing is that the aeroplane's flying properly and you're going to kill yourself. Like, that is absolutely okay, I, critical. I go with that, yeah. Then, it's that you're kind of having a good time. I'm, I'm doing that so far. <laughs> okay. And then it's kind of like trying to get where you need to go. Into. We 
flew information from Sling Aircraft's home base and then on to Gaborone, Botswana's capital, to clear customs. Then we took off to fly over this wide open land where there's absolutely virtually no development at all to end up on the spectacular Mahari Khadi Pans. The Mahari Khadi was a mega lake in times gone by that has dried out. So you have these massive pans without a one foot rise or fall for hundreds of kilometers. No fences, very beautiful, stark and wild place. There were actually a couple of motivations for coming back. One was to reconnect and have a reunion with uh, Mike and Matt and James and celebrate the return of SHW from our epic journey across the Atlantic and then get to meet Pilot Bambi, which has been just such a joy. I didn't really appreciate what a good pilot and how much diversity of experience that she had. Like, it feels full circle now that Shit, we met you guys and you guys flew this plane so far. And so I got more interested in talking to her about her experiences with SHW. <laughs> Reunited. Realizing that she would be able to offer some great insight. My first sling. This is what I learned to fly slings in <laughs> before mine was done, yes. We're going to get you a cold beer into the swimming pool as well. I don't drink beer for 10 years. You've known me. You don't know I don't drink fucking beer. I can pull the beer on your head. And we'll do that. I've got feelings. Eh? I, SHW is a great plane. Yeah, we've had a fantastic time, and we all we had to do along the way was the was the oil change. For the rest, performed wonderfully. We had no problems whatsoever. <laughs> How was your flight down? Oh, yeah. You guys did the real mission. It was fine. Lloyd and I nearly went off the runway at Suretsu Kama in Gabs. <laughs> I tell you what, this thing. We changed the tail wheel like yesterday. And it had flown 45 minutes since a new tail wheel. <laughs> no way. An adventurer always has to be ready to change plans. And because of the bad weather at the beginning of our trip and the potential of the weather closing in again at the end, we had to change ours. The problem was that we had to be home by Saturday for a big party we'd organised to celebrate the return of SHW. Are you guys willing to... It's just too late and too much and cut weather and so on to skip uh, Namibia. Yeah, that's fine. We're okay with anything. Yes. So, so we're, we're going to leave tomorrow morning at 6. And our plan instead would be to spend tonight and tomorrow night here and then possibly go and camp at Kubu Island or somewhere else and then head up. Which means that we can see the meerkats tomorrow. How are the meerkats yeah. at the moment? They're doing well. So we had two well habituated colonies and they're working on the third one. Slowly, <laughs> slowly. <laughs> it's getting there. Slowly, slowly, yeah. But it, it takes quite a while for them to get habituated. Just, just get, get, get used to humans, right? Yeah, you spend some time with them. When they wake up, you are there at the bar. But during the first days, they won't come out. But yeah. eventually, after some days, they will have they to come hungry. out because they will be hungry. And, and eventually, when they're used to you, they sit on your head. Do what? Yeah, they can <laughs> sit on your lap. And uh, you can get lucky, you can get, have one on your head. I mean, those are the most studied meerkats on Earth, aren't they? Yes. And we have uh, a colony, which was filmed by the BBC crew. And they made a documentary called the Meerkats Dynasties. It's one of the, the famous Meerkats. Mike, has Bambi heard the granny story? I mean, I've heard it so many times before, but it's like funnier each time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm building up to a good granny story. Tonight, later. Oh. Tonight or tomorrow. Oh, okay. We haven't heard it. You've heard the granny story. You're not the granny story. Oh, you will not have ever heard. Yeah. True story. That sounds as untrue. <laughs> as untrue. That sounds as untrue. We've got Kagila. Eh, 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 eh. It felt like such a great welcoming because you guys all arrived. It felt like the whole circle was complete. The whole Sling Highwing gang was all back together. And then you you bond over something. You've flown the same plane. You've experienced similar situations. One of the great things about a common adventure is the bonds it creates afterwards. So, um, 
Gangi is the world's most well-traveled hedgehog. He has been around the world, sitting on the front of the dash like this, and has navigated us safely, the whole world. So you can see Gangi's actually a pilot. So this is his flying helmet, and he's got probably, he just doesn't have epaulets on at the moment, but uh, he's got the proper little fluff around his neck here, keep him warm. And I must admit, you know, I, I wouldn't feel quite the same unless Gangi was with me navigating and helping us with our flying. And now I'm taking him to visit the meerkats. Are you brave enough to go for a horse ride with me this morning? Yes. So he's coming for a horse ride with me this morning. Gangi, you sit in the front and navigate, okay? Yeah. I mean, there are just a million wonderful things to do on the Makhani Khani Pass. And everybody obviously thinks of the big five, the lions and the elephants and the rhino, but there's also a little five. And one of the wonderful elements of those camps there is that some of the guides have, over a period of more than 20 years, habituated two of the families of meerkats that are in that region. Much more satisfying to ride somewhere, to see something, than to drive there. It's kind of like picking your feet before you eat or something like that. Growing. Growing your feet. <laughs> Meerkats are tiny little animals with limited weaponry, and so they need to keep clear of predators. Typically, a meerkat will try and stand on the highest point in the area and look around to identify any predators. So if you have an habituated family of meerkats and you sit very still and your head happens to be the highest point, a meerkat may just stand on top of your head in order to see its surroundings. I guess I've been here about 20 times over the last 40 years, ever since I started flying. And each time I've gone to a slightly different part of the pans. These are called the Makhari Khari pans. They're huge, you know, huge salt pans. First time I came up here, we were flying micro-ride aircraft then, those very rickety things. I even had a crash just up the road here at the runway at Guetta. So it's probably my 10th crash or something I ever had. Um, but I love this part of the world because the flying here is free and open and easy and you can land anywhere on the pans. And the bird life, of course, is amazing. And then you have the migration of the zebra and the wildebeest, lions. So I've seen lion right here where we are now. I nearly walked into them by mistake. I actually walked away from where we'd landed with the microlights and I went to go to the toilet in the bush, you know, bush toilet. And I, I walked back and when we took off, I saw the lions, pride of lions, right there, right near to where it had been, doing my business. So it was, what the hell, man, that was close. The elephant comes through here as well. We were once at Kubu Island where we're going tomorrow and there was a whole herd of elephant that came through in the night because when we woke up in the morning, there were all these elephant prints and droppings and we realized that we'd been sl sleeping out in the open right there and they just parted around us and walked right past us and on. So it's, I just love this part of the world. You feel free and alive and somehow back to your roots. Do you get this thing, Mike? Like, today, mm. which I, I just love being out here, but I, I, I'm so in love with our aeroplanes Mm. that I'm missing them sitting there on the runway. Like, I want to go and see them. <laughs> and I want to go to, for a flight to like Kubi yeah. and land and have yeah. a cup of James was galloping ahead. There was Gangi's flying helmet. So Gangi's not used to being on horseback. 
flying helmet came off, landed on the road. James saw it. Thank you, James. What a way yeah. to spend the morning. Horse is so calm, you can stand right behind it, it won't kick you. But I'm happy to run the people like Nosewell. They are so funny, they're funny people. And I was laughing all the way. From here to the Miyake is laughing. When I grew up on horses, you stood behind a horse and kicked you. You stood in front of it and bit you. You stood on the side and stepped on it. Especially James. <laughs> yeah, you'll find me too. We'll see you next time. <laughs> There's Gangi reunited with his helmet. I flew Gangi around the Matterhorn in August in Switzerland and I've flown him in Namibia. James, so I've had the honour of showing him some of the world. All people with a long nose are inquisitive. Onward and upward. Altius, Kitius, Fortius, Gangi. Gangi's crossed the Atlantic <laughs> three times now. In a single piston engine aircraft, a sling two and a sling four, and now sling he's simply with a high wing with Linda and myself. Yeah. Cheers, Mike. It is, uh, you have been such a good influence in my life, man. You know? I met you. It was a dress-up party, James, remember? Yes. Came, James came dressed up with a see-through skirt. <laughs> and I immediately thought, ah, oh, this guy's cool. And then it was late afternoon and James and I took our clothes off and we were running down the lawn and doing somersaults into the pool and screaming. <laughs> Naked. And anyway, just as a side note, um, the next-door neighbour's daughter was friends with my daughter and he looked <laughs> over the fence and saw us and said, oh, they knew never going back to that house. <laughs> Anyway, and we ended up, five or six of us, inside a dog kennel. The dog kennel was completely destroyed, <laughs> and, the, and the deck outside was burnt. <laughs> we had to replace the, replace the tiles. But I promise you it was worth it. It was a fantastic party. It was all good, clean fun, though, you know? <laughs> I mean, it turned into this incredible adventure that, you know, I just couldn't have imagined how it was going to turn out. First of all, building these amazing, amazing aircraft that have allowed us to fly all over the world. And then our partnership, like this wonderful friendship, doing adventurous stuff, actually living the lifestyle that I think a lot of people would, would like to also to emulate. You know, yeah. And then just like after a while, when it becomes a sort of a... Uh, public marketing thing, and then you have to have fun, you have to live the lifestyle. <laughs> it's absolutely imperative that you go on holiday all the time and yeah. leave behind your colleagues to do all the work. And, yeah. and I just want to raise a toast to our employees because for the first time, we've actually got employees who could do some of the shit that we used to do. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Mm, cheers, and long may it continue. After lunch, the afternoon schedule promised a visit to the Bushman. Have you been in the aeroplane or not? And then, after much anticipation, Bambi finally gets to hear Mike's scarcely believable granny story. I was holding on the seat and I fell underneath and I hung on like this and was dragged underneath the plane. And you can't let go because you go through the propeller if you let go. So I was like... 